Hi everybody, I'm O. Thank you for coming to my channel if you're new here. And if you're returning, thank you so much for coming back. I appreciate you. So today I felt the desire to, I guess, be part of a hashtag, which is the show me how you practice hashtag that I believe was started by Astral Lady Tarot. And I will put a link to her in uh, the description slash notes slash comment sections below the video. Um, but yeah, I just felt like that has been such a good hashtag going around YouTube, specifically um, the Tarot Tube community. And the cards I pulled today, I felt like just told a really good story that was providing a teachable moment. So that's what I aim to do. So um, let's light the candle. And I think really what my intention is for just lighting that candle is to provide not only and obviously a sense of calmness to you guys, but I'm really hoping that I can be calm myself because this is heavy. This is going to be a heavy um, assessment of the cards. And I just, I just hope that I speak eloquently and with grace and that I really can get across what, what, I, what, what is resonating with me, if that makes sense. So let us begin. I'm actually going to pull these away because my cards were already given to me earlier this morning when I when I laid them out. So I'm gonna put them before you guys now and kind of just walk you through um, how I even got this far. We're just working with a three card spread. I find that for me, for dailies, woo! <laughs> sorry about that, you guys almost took a tumble. For me, for dailies, uh, three cards is is enough. It's plenty. Um, there's a lot to dig into with three cards. Um, you know, you could you could turn this into a two hour assessment. You know, if you really wanted to. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't have that much time to devote to um, three cards. But I just say that because I kind of want to express how, how deep I feel like you can go these days with tarot um, and the answers you're seeking and the questions you ask, et cetera, et cetera. So I pull three cards and when I pull three cards, um, I lay them out. One, two, three. This is the first card I pulled, the second card I pulled, the third card I pulled. But I do raise the second card because I look at my second card as the significator in the spread. And um, it's kind of what I start to then base everything on. I do a general reading for my dailies. And that means I don't ask a question. I do not ask the question. I just, I don't want to say expect the cards, but I believe that the cards are going to tell me what I need to know for the day. So, um, that's the aim there. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think if I had anything else I wanted to share just with regards to that. I don't think so. I don't think so. So, um, I, well, actually, I guess I do. I take that back. I apologize. Um, I also apologize. You guys aren't centered. I was trying my best to be centered. Okay. Is that better? My OCD is taking center stage. Um, energy. You know, when I pull the cards and I say that I don't ask a question, I guess, I guess the question <laughs> that goes without being said is, can you tell me what the energy of today is going to be or something to that effect? Okay, so I'm looking for energy. I'm looking to just get a feel for what I'm working through. 
And this one hit heavy because if I were to be honest, I don't believe that this is just, I mean, this is of course specific to today because these cards were laid out and, and so they're, um, I guess top of my mind, but this is also stuff I've been shuffling through, meandering through for, I would say several days, if not weeks now. Um, and also I'm working with, um, the moon power tarot and this deck is a, is a deck I, I actually truly have struggled with and I've put it away and it's kind of resurfaced because, um, a few guys, I talk about Al Moon 513 racing very often on this channel, but she's just recently posted a sort of tutorial slash class on how to reconnect with decks that have been kind of troubling for you. And not that this is one of the ones that I, I worked on because I did um, take part in that little session and it was very, very helpful and insightful. So I do recommend you checking out her channel if you haven't already heard about this. I believe she's calling this specific um, tutorial slash guided session, Forget That Deck. Um, and then she gives you like three or four videos for what you should be practicing and card spreads and questions, etc. cetera. Um, and, and, it's, and it's really helpful. So I definitely recommend that. Um, but after going through that kind of practice with a different deck, I've just kind of decided to pull out decks that have been on the back burner for quite some time and, and see if I can reignite, you know, a, a sort of connection that I felt like I was lacking before. And I will say that just within the past 24 slash 48 hours that I've been working with this deck, I've noticed, um, a significant change. So I don't know if it's in thanks to Racine and, and the practice and the things that I've kind of like implemented slash learned um, through what she's offered free <laughs> to the public, or if it's just that my insight and my ability to read the cards has um, improved. And perhaps it's a variation of, of both of them. Um, at any rate, it's exciting to kind of be in the moment that I am now and probably what prompted me to do this video because I'm really trying to just be in the moment of processing these new tidbits of information that I'm discovering with tarot. So I digress. Um, back to what I was saying. We have one, two, three. This is the significator. We're just asking for the energy and let's start from there. So one thing that has also kind of come to the forefront within my practice journey, within my tarot journey, is to try to sit with the things in cards that are unsettling. And I'm sure you guys have heard about this too, but I kind of want to um, bring this topic to the forefront for a moment because I think what's unsettling really does have something to tell you. And I think it's part of our shadow mind to immediately kind of suppress it and, and cover it up. But it's up to us as spiritualists to really try to like bring it to light, you know? And so that was something I was doing when I, when I was assessing these cards for the first time, you know, like what is it that really comes out? I don't want to use the word trigger, but what is it that really comes out? And like, you know, like I don't understand about the cards. And I guess I'll say that the, the thing that really hit me was, was really such a simple question. And it was like, what does justice even mean to me these days? Like, I, like, I don't even know if I'm being completely honest with you, like, and this is where I think this journey, this journey begins. Um, I feel like there is so much injustice in the world right now that it's not even funny. Like, what is justice? Like, how is that even a word these days? Do you get what I mean by that when I say it like that? I mean, I know what justice means, but I just feel like I haven't seen it these days. And so, so that was just really conflicting, like first and foremost. Um, 
Another thing that kind of jarred me with this is that this isn't like really a standard Two of Pentacles image. The standard Two of Pentacles image is kind of like a jester who's, I would say, juggling the pentacles. Um, and in this instance, you know, there's two persons. There's not one. And so like, what does that mean? You know, like, why are there two? Like, typically you see two with the two of cups, but you don't see two people with the two of pentacles. So that kind of like threw me for a loop there. Um, and like the way that they're kind of like juxtaposed slash intertwined throws me too. I mean, they're not standing up straight. They're actually like really awkward. And I don't know if they're doing a dance pose and you can tell that they're not, they're not like connected. It's not like one person. There's, there's one behind the other, or at least that's how I'm perceiving this image. There's one behind the other and she's bending one way and she's bending the other. I, I take it that there's two. So I, I was like struggling with that a bit. So so let's just start, let's, let's, let's stay on the significator, the two of pentacles for a moment. So what are things that we know about the two of pentacles just in general? Pentacles are earth, pentacles are grounding. This one showed up upright, pentacles, I'm sorry, not pentacles, but twos have to do with choices slash decisions and they have to do with balance. And we see, we, we still see the infinity sign, um, which is a symbol of balance and kind of karma, what goes around comes around in this ebb and flow of, of things within the universe. And they're looking up to it. Um, but this card being the significator and being shimmied between two really strong, you know, major arcana cards that calls out to me too. Um, what it calls out to me is weakness, um, that the two of pentacles has been weakened somehow because, because of what, um, is on either side of it. And I found that, you know, very fascinating. Um, because I suppose, you know, I mean, let's be completely honest. The story here would completely change if justice reversed was was the significator. And I don't want to talk to it because I don't I don't want to kind of confuse the issue. But those of you that read tarot and understand tarot can probably see that just switching that um, provides a totally different context to the reading than than what we're kind of going for here right now. So let's just pull, let's just pull that out. Let's just pull out weakness and what I've just said a little bit about justice and how I actually feel like things are really unjust these days. Things are really unfair these days. And, and let's kind of go into that a little bit further. Like what is so unjust these days? What is so unfair these days? Um, a multitude of things, you know? And I'm going to speak personally for a minute because show me how you practice. Um, I will say that it feels like every day I get worried that I'm going to be laid off. And I don't know why or how that fear creeps up, but it's there. And it's prevalent and it's weakening me. Um, social media, politics, um sometimes just like the daily, I don't want to say like the daily juggle of being in a relationship, but relationships aren't easy. I feel like I've said this and I'll continue to say this, you know, throughout the course of my channel, relationships are give and take. And sometimes you give too much and sometimes they give too much. And sometimes you have to fairly assess what's going on. Justice, injustice. I don't know. Sometimes regardless of being in a really loving relationship, it can bog you down. That's okay. It's healthy to be a human 
and see that and accept that <laughs> and work with that, you know. Um, did I mention political injustice right now? If not, that's a huge one. I think a lot of us are really, really on pins and needles about what's going to happen within the next couple of weeks. And whether or not, you know, this is going to right itself and we'll feel like, <laughs> we'll feel like perhaps we're not weakened anymore, you know, like perhaps um, a silver lining is actually occurring. I don't know. Who's to say? Stay tuned, guys. <laughs> so, yeah. Let's also consider justice in terms of karma and justice in terms of, I don't know, self-care and what we feel like we deserve versus what we, what we don't. And, and, and how perhaps we can be too black and white, too cut and dry, too right versus wrong, um, too yin versus yang, okay? And how we don't really consider the gray area and we don't want to. I mean, there, for eight years, I feel like we've really been struggling with some divisive tendencies and, um, addictions to these divisive tendencies and does that or does that not um portray itself in terms of where we feel like justice should be served you know um i don't know but i do think those are kind of underlying themes that i that i am struggling with too um because I'll like I'll be honest, certain days I feel like I'm I'm very black and white. I'm I'm very controlling about you know what I think so and so should be doing or how so and so so and so should be treating me. And other days I'm a little bit more fluid and I'm a little bit more relaxed and go with the flow and okay with it. And so does that mean that you know justice was you know appropriate that day or does that mean you know I'm, I'm struggling with injustice that day you know I mean it, it to me and I've always read the cards with reversals so I mean it just depends um on free will I think and and how I'm how my energy personally feels in that particular moment you know whether or not I'm feeling justified whether or not um I feel like there's unjust in the world etc etc let's look at the hanged man the hanged man i feel like he either put himself there willingly or he asked somebody for help um to help strap him in and like regardless of that like he's he's cool with just vibing here like he is totally chill composed relaxed in the moment in the moment of the ish, like he's here now. The thing is he's he's simply assessing it. He's simply observing it. He's not thinking about whether or not something is fair or not fair. He's just watching it happen. He's just in his flow state. And so what I find really fascinating then is that the balance I'm trying to find it. I am trying to find the balance that will ground me <laughs> between the air aspect of an injustice world, whatever that means, whatever that encompasses, versus the water aspect of being fluid and letting things be and letting things go and being here right now, right now, right now. And so, yeah, of course, I'm weakened by these two major arcana cards because my brain space is spending so much energy. <laughs> I don't, I'm like over here like this, but I'm literally like flipping between the two like this. I can't stop the vicious cycle. Okay. What I also found really fascinating with this is that we have earth, we have air, we have water. 
And a lot of times what I've been trying to do is reading my cards to show me or to pull out, well, what is it that's not being told? And you get where I'm going with that. Well, clearly there's no fire. And that really concerns me because guys, like I'm a fire sign and talk about feeling weakened. Like I don't even have the fire or the gusto or the stamina or the sense of urgency to try to pull out from this right now. There's no nothing to say, come on, there's a glimmer of hope. This is what can light my candle. There's nothing here to prompt that. And I just find that fascinating and I want to, I want to pull that out. So it, it kind of, I mean, it either resonates with you or it doesn't, but it's something that I try to, I did, I try to dig into with the cards and explore because it, it, I mean, truly right here, it does tell me things, you know, like, like what it tells me then is another kind of journal prompt question that I'm going to pose to you guys, which is. Well, what can I do to light my fire in this instance where I'm feeling torn and weakened between fairness slash unfairness and like wanting to just be and not let fairness slash unfairness dictate slash control my life? What can I be doing? How can I get out of the vicious cycle? And, and I think it is about leaning into a certain type of fire, truly a certain type of something that brings me passion and excites me. And I'll be honest, it's why I'm on video today because talking about this type of stuff is exciting for me. And I do get a sense of enjoyment out of it. And I like the creative aspect of just trying to dig into the cards and their meanings and and, and hopefully help you slash encourage you on your journey. But with that said, you know, I did pull an additional card to see what they're looking up towards, what it is that they need in order to not feel weak anymore. And I mean, I don't know, it's kind of woo-woo how um, how much this deck is actually talking to me. Because I, recently I just feel like my decks have not been talking to me. But wow. Wow, wow, wow with the Empress. And I haven't had enough time to sit with her um, prior to turning on my camera. But what I can tell you is that she is telling me to lean into things that really help me identify um, a sense of truly um, connecting with with the sovereign, okay? Um, with, With both the goddess outside of me that can inspire me and all of these kind of goddess um beings that inspire me um living or past um or archetypal and and finding encouragement from (laughs) popo says hi finding encouragement from how they've lived their life or how they inspire others to live their life. And um, there's a real sense of not only creativity in that, but like really creating your own, you know, your own purpose. And I was having that discussion with my husband last night that I just feel like I'm in this rut where... I don't have a sense of purpose and I hate it. I hate, I hate feeling that right now. And, um, so I think that she is definitely stressing slash requesting me to, to dig into that and figure out, figure out where, where to light my candle, how to light my candle again. And I think that's it, actually. I think that's it. I don't really think I have anything more to say. Um, I actually, I do. I take that back. I take that back. Let's, let's push her out for a minute because I still think there is so much more to be explored with just these three cards. I find it fascinating that we have 11 and we have 12 and You know, I caught myself kind of considering strength here 
and strength isn't the right word, but I'm going to use it because it was what first came to mind when I was trying to assess the cards. And I'm, I'm thinking, well, is 12 stronger than 11? You know, is justice stronger than the hangman? Um, is, is finding or feeling a sense of justice stronger? Like, you know, I'm like, I was kind of like taking it down that road. And then I'm like, but what's strength? You know, like is strength being able to control your mind in any one and given moment or is stress more, or I'm sorry, is strength more so about, um, really having that ability to let go. There is strength in letting go, you know, and we don't, we don't admit that enough. And so I think that was worth saying. The other thing that kind of then came to mind is when you think about the fool's journey in order to, um, increase my strength, strength slash weakness here, you know, these kind of concepts, the fool must journey from 11 to 12. So there is this sense of trying to fulfill that quest, you know, to, to get away from the justice mindset and move into the hanged man portion of the journey. And so I found that very fascinating. And I suppose too, we could go into numerology a little bit too. What's 11? One plus one is two. Um, and what's 12? Two plus one is three. Ironically, what? That's the Empress card again. So, I mean, just, the, it's crazy to me. It's crazy to me how everything really came out very interconnected. Very, very interconnected. Um, so anyway, I hope this helps. I'll be honest, it helps me to just kind of jot this down, stick it out there into the webosphere and, um, have it to reference, you know, in any given moment that I feel like I even kind of personally need to reflect on, on my quote unquote tarot journey. So my quote unquote fool's journey, if you will. So let me know if you like kind of this this type of a thing. I know I'm typically in front of the camera, but I just, I've been feeling kind of icky. I haven't been feeling like being, you know, showy. And I don't know, I've just been in this, maybe it's the change of seasons. You know, I've just, I've liked being a little hermit over here, cozy and in my bubble with candles lit and coffee to sip and tarot cards to shuffle. So at any rate, um, give me grace with that. And, um, and yeah, if you kind of like, this type of a thing and you'd like me to explore um readings you know now and and continue to show you how i practice um please let me know because because i want to know that you know you you get value out of this too so anyway i hope you guys are having a great day and um we'll chat soon cheers